It's fine if the media wants to portray our culture like that. Fine. But why people of African Caribbean origin repeat this kind of bullshit, it astounds me. As if we came to America culturally empty handed. As if there weren't griots in Yoruba land and, and in the Mandingo Empire for hundreds of years before transatlantic slavery. Rhythmically rhyming over the beat of a drum and singing and recording our people's history. Um, if people of African Caribbean origin are completely ignorant of that, then they should cease to speak or put themselves forward as experts on our culture. When I look at what I do, this isn't something I learned from MTV or listening to American rap records. Yes, that was an influence on me, but I grew up on an African Caribbean sound system. I grew up hearing certain tales and certain rhythmic stories. This is my culture. It's not something I learned from watching television. Um, and so in that sense, I very much view what I do as, as practicing our culture. That doesn't mean other people can't be part of it. That doesn't mean people are not African Caribbean. You know, I practice a Chinese martial art. I don't feel like I have to beg Chinese people's permission, mm -hmm. but I do have to acknowledge it's a Chinese martial art. I can't pretend it's a half Jamaican, half Scottish martial art just because I do it. It isn't, you know. And that's what I see with a lot of hip hop fans. This weird, like, oh no, it's everybody's music. Yeah, it is. It's everybody's music to the same extent that Chinese martial arts, everybody's martial arts. Yes, all human beings can practice these things. But if we respect the people's culture, we should acknowledge where it comes from and that it is a product of a particular group of people's culture. It's like even in uni, you have to source where you get your information from. Exactly. You know, when you do your exactly. dissertation or essay, you have to source it. You right. can't quote it as your own. Precisely. Yeah. And, and to me, what happens a lot with rap music is, and all forms of African Caribbean music and African American music, is that record labels that are not owned by African Caribbeans and African Americans co-opt the music and the moment they can put a white face on it, you know, it sells more records right. and then it gets co-opted. We think of rock music today as middle class white music, even though the early rock musicians are all African American. Not only the African American, the African American women. You know, Memphis Minnie, Sister Rosetta Farp, and the Rolling Stones and Led Zeppelin, even though Led Zeppelin stole a load of people's songs, they acknowledged. Pink Floyd are named after two blues singers, Pink and Floyd. Mm -hmm. So these people acknowledged who their influences were, but today, if I pick up a guitar and start making rock music, Black people will tell me I'm trying to be white. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. The level to which they've managed to market this as something has nothing to do with black people. To the point that black people will tell me if I make rock music tomorrow. It's incredible. Dissociation of actual history. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. The ignorance is incredible. And to make it even worse, the guitar in and of itself came to Europe via the Moors. Via Africans and Arabs occupying Spain. So on both levels, whether you're talking about ancient history, or you're talking about modern blues music, on both levels, we should be playing rock music still, but we're not because we believe it's not our culture. Well, I see the potential for rap and grime to head in the same way. Where 20 years from now, at first they were saying it's everybody's music, everybody's music, everybody's music. Then eventually all the faces are white and then they say, oh, well, it's, it's white music now. Mm -hmm. And I don't, listen, I'm not saying white artists shouldn't participate in the music, they should. But they should say what Eminem said. You know, to do black music so selfishly and use it to get myself wealthy. Or let's do the math. If I was black, I would have sold half. I didn't have to graduate from Lincoln High School to know that. Cool, respect. You're one of the greatest rappers ever, but you can still acknowledge the facts of the racism of the society you live in. I'm not saying you can't rap because you're white. Of course you should rap if you love rap. But don't feel the need to deny where this culture comes from. I don't feel the need to deny that Shakespeare was English just because I read his work, you know what I mean? A black person putting out the music and the message that you have have the same, um, how can I put it, the same, you know, support, same Of course standing. not. And why would that be then? Of course not. We live in a racist country, man. The idea that racism only affects the jobs market, you know, even between me and you. If I walk into a job, maybe if I didn't have an afro, this picky head lets me down. But if I walk into a job and you walk into a job, who knows? You know, maybe I look less threatening than you. I'm like skinned than you are, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Maybe people perceive me as oof, a little bit less. Oof, oof, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we live in the real world where people are judged by the way they look. We can't pretend we don't. And we live in a country that has a long racist history. And there was report after report after report showing that in the jobs market, in the criminal justice system, in all these other areas, there is still serious racial discrimination. The idea that it doesn't affect the music industry is beyond ridiculous. You know, so when you have, as I said before, I commented on it, everyone got upset. Professor Green makes a video like Jungle, Jungle, calling people hungry apes. And it's played on daytime TV. No one accuses him of promoting violence. Operation Trident are not shutting down his tours. You know, he's not looked at the way so solid or gigs were looked at, why? We have to ask ourselves, you know? What's the difference between him and so solid and gigs? It's an obvious difference, but no one wants to call it because they don't want to say it. And it's not like he's showing white people's violence. There's plenty of white people in Hackney that are violent or Queen's Crescent or Camden. No, it's a particular black male niggerized narrative that 
now white artists are even promoting but they're not going to have to bear the consequences of so riots are going to come we're going to get the blame for it our culture caused them to riot apparently mm -hmm. right but when they make violent videos no one calls them to account yeah. and we're going to sit here and take it because we're mugs so why we're, we're chumps as H. Rock Brown used what? to say the artist today what is the fear factor of them not speaking out for things that they know to be the truth because if they do know it. Artists, black artists particularly they're scared they're very scared and it doesn't make no sense to me because there's plenty of young white kids who can see the, the racism that's going on they're not blind they live in the same country as we do and it's not like public enemies music wasn't bought by millions of young white people that's the thing they tried to paint you like you're an angry black person mm -hmm. like there's not millions of white people that relate to you who bought Wu-Tang's records? Who bought Public Enemy's records? Who buys Erica Badu's records? Who buys Jill Scott's records? So the idea that you can't sell with a black, as a black artist if you analyse racism, it's complete bullshit. But the media makes us believe, Oosh, don't piss off your record label owner. But the fact is, young white kids that are middle class, that are working class, young Asian kids, young black kids, kids of all ethnicities, want to hear an authentic story. Mm -hmm. And that's why they buy into artists. And also at the same token, the record label bosses aren't the people who actually have the talent. They're the ones who are seeking yeah. out the talent. They're, so. not, they're nobody. They just have the money. Yeah. But we think they're somebody. You know, the, 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 the wealth is the artist. And so what I'm saying is, if Public Enemy can sell millions of records all over the world, openly analysing a racist white power structure, Bob Marley the same. People act like Bob Marley was some kind of apolitical, this stupid documentary they made about him. Oh, he was in the middle and he was confused about his identity. I seen it yet. Oh, it's complete nonsense. I mean, this, you're talking about a man. Now, anyone who knows Jamaica knows. Right, that loads of Jamaicans are in denial about their African heritage as a legacy of slavery and just general stupidity, right? So for someone of Bob's complexion, who has serious privilege in Jamaica, who could be, you know, the uppity yellow dude, you know, who gets more opportunities, to openly not affirm a black identity, but an African identity, is an incredibly revolutionary thing to do, which is why he's a hero all throughout the African continent. But this documentary presents him as if he was some racially neutral, confused, mixed race youth. You know, he's got a song called, called, called Black Progress. He's got a song called Africans Unite. He's got Africans that liberate Zimbabwe. Can, shall I go on? 